Hi right, folks, thanks again for joining me and for your support and best wishes, very much appreciated. Today I've, I've made one up, it's like a sort of river going through the forest, similar sort of thing I've done um, in the past. Just try to change the elements around and introduce one or two different um, items. It's all from the imagination. So, before we go any further, before I show you the colours, let me just show you my new book. So I'm working on a couple of other book projects at the moment. For the time being, this remains my latest one, Watercolour Painting Made Simple, Volume 3. Nine paintings in there with all the step-by-step -step photo instructions to keep you going. That's available on Amazon. As for the colours on this one, we've used Ultramarine, Lemon Yellow, Payne's Grey, Lizard in Crimson, Raw Sienna, Burnt Umber and Light Red. And the brushes, I only used the two brushes, oh no, I used three brushes. The large one ran to Ake, number three rigger and then a little tiny little rigger. I think I only used that for the bird. So I want a load of colours mixed in the background, nice soften it all off. So I've put a little fair bit of water on <clears throat> and then I'm going to go a bit of a lizarine, a bit of lemon yellow. Not a normal combination that I use but I just want something in the background just to get things up and running. A bit of raw sienna, lemon yellow. All looks a bit haphazard at the moment but fingers crossed it will come together eventually. This is lemon yellow and ultramarine and I'm just basically just trying to get some sort of atmospheric beginnings to this painting. Lemon yellow, Payne's grey, a few darker sections. Let's get a bit of light red into the into the scene. They could be like leaves or something in the background from trees that are changing into autumnal colours. I don't know, let's, let's just see how it develops. Um, let's clean the brush and maybe just take a bit of ultramarine and just swish, swish that down that sense a bit. I don't normally do this, I'm just experimenting really. Now the ultramarine is, is basically the, the bits of sky that you're going to see between it's too much water on this brush is it happening but I'm just going with it to see what happens. So the ultramarine is the bits of sky you can see between the trees. Just get the brush a little bit drier. A bit of lemon yellow. I'm just soaking up those bits. So does that look random enough? I would have preferred it lighter than that actually. Do you know what, I'm going to make it lighter. I'm going to make it lighter by just taking off some of that paint. A bit of light up there. If the brush gets too mucky, just dry it. Wash it in the, in the pot and just dry it. Right, let's go with that. Next I'm going to switch to a number three rigger brush and take a bit of lemon yellow, a bit of ultramarine and I'm going to start bashing in. These are all the distant trees. A lot of these you wouldn't see because they'll be covered up by the foreground trees, but as long as I can see just one or two in the background, I'll be happy. These are the reflections. There's going to be water in there somewhere. I don't know where it's going to be yet, but I know it's going to be there. So I'm just whacking in these reflections. The ones on the top as well. The whole mass of background trees. Switch back to the height brush and this time I want it fairly dry so I'm just squeezing all the water into the jar and then I'm going to take a bit of raw sienna. I'm just going to work out where's this land line. But it's, it's going to look pretty high up there. There's a bit more coming up there. And it's coming down, sort of snaking its way. I'm 
might not look like much at the moment, but if you can imagine that, that's going to be like a bit of foreground. Let's have a bit more over there as well, a bit of water in the middle. And then it's sort of banking up. paper has stretched a little bit so I'm just going to pull it flat against the piece of plywood. It's a 9mm piece of plywood I got from B&Q. Cut to size and leaning against the easel. Just going to refix it there with these clips. And then what I'm going to do is put in some stronger background trees. Back to the lemon yellow, a bit of blue. And this time I'm going to press down a little bit. So just going on a little bit stronger. Don't forget the reflections as you're going along. Let's introduce a little bit of burnt umber into it as well. I am going straight over the land areas, but I'll just paint, re, redo the land as I'm going along. There's going to be one or two eight more layers yet, so I won't worry too much about painting over those bits of land that I've just put in. A few more over on the left hand side, pop in the reflections as I go along, loads of little flicks and things. Keep reloading the brush. The more you press down, the broader the stroke. So when it's in the background, I'll just do a light touch. Almost using it like a, like you'd use a, a, a pen if you're writing, that sort of narrow width of stroke. And then once, once, once the main twigs are in, then I'm going to start doing all the twigs and things that are growing, so they're coming off the top of the paper. Back in with a bit more paint. There, some distant. Bit of red in there. And then what you'll find is the paper's drying. These will go on stronger and stronger. As they're, as they're still wet, they'll just fade off into the, into the distance. I think there's pretty pretty much landmass over on this right hand side. A little bit of water there creeping in when I'm just putting that reflection in there. Reload the brush, brown, blue, and lemon yellow. Stronger reflection down there. Right again. Getting a bit muddy, so I'll just clean the brush. Take the excess off. And now I'm going to start thinking about printing some really broader. In fact first let's just pop a bit of, a bit of foliage in there. You know, just bits of leaves. Right now I'm going to go some slightly closer ones now, so I'm pressing down a lot more now. That's true, make that base a little bit stronger. I'm reserving 
the strongest trees, right for the foreground. When I say strongest, I mean sort of darkest in tone. I haven't dried the painting yet, so this is still going on quite soft. But that'll help with the sort of create the sort of three dimensional look. When the, when the closest trees go in. Let's pop a big one on over there as well. Get that reflection in down there. A few twigs and things. I'm pushing right into that light area just to maximise the contrast, see how well they show up. Stick another one in that space there. You know, some sort of wriggling the brushes I'm giving up as well, just gives the, the tree, the bark, adds a bit of texture to it. Let's add a little bit of and then yellow down these bases. Bit of ultramarine to the mix, so it always darkens it slightly. Calm that down slightly, it's a bit too strong. You see how it's slowly taking shape. The paper's stretched a little bit, so I'm just going to again pull it tight just so it's flat. Right then, now this time. I'm going to go darker still, this time I'm switching to the height brush now. I'm going for some really close ones these are, right in the foreground. So I've got just enough water on the brush to hold the hairs together. And I'm just going burnt umber, ultramarine. Right then, let's pop the first one in, actually let's, let's, let's dry it first. because this will now go on a lot stronger and I'm sort of just just wiggling the brush a little bit as I, as I put those trunks in you're not there just when I was zooming up there and I just wanted to avoid this one I don't want to paint over what I've already done let's bring that slightly forward then just reload the brush so just enough water, there's never any water splashing about the palette. Now this one, it's giving up like that. Again, reload the brush. Um, I'm going to push one right, right there, into that light area. Bring that right forward of that. just up there. And then just off there, just a, the odd little odd thing, branches and things coming off there. Let's pop 
sun just down there like that. A bit more water, a bit more paint. Let's see if I'm So much about the others, I think. Just have a few little things growing slightly further down. I can have a reflection down there in the water. You know, a little bit higher. foreground reeds and whatnot. Let's clean the brush. Let's pop a few little background shadows in here and there. Um, hang on, I've squeezed too much water out. I want to keep a little bit of water in there because I don't want it to be shadows too strong. A bit of brown, a bit of red, a bit of blue. I'm just mixing a sort of bluey grey mix. A little bit of water. So pop those shadows in there, look, see. things put those reflections in well, I might can't resist scraping a few little rocks in here and there just, just at the water's edge there, Two little rocks come down. Oops, no, I didn't mean to do that, I'll leave that like that. If I just wet that a little bit, I might be able to get away. there. Oh, so being careful not to stone up, be careful not to overdo it with the rocks. It's hard to stop once you get once you get started, once you get a taste for it. I'll just start leave it like that for now, I think. Right, I think I need a bit of I'm gonna squeeze out some neat yellow, I think. Let's get some lemon yellow onto the palette and just brush in. Just dry brushing some leaves here and there. So I'm just squeezing the water out using thumb and forefinger. Just dry it on the tea towel. Also just scuff some of the ears. I'm just looking for random shapes, so a few ears doing a rye. Let's just pop those in. Um, just have a few on there. A 
few down there. of green here and there. Maybe it's a touch of red, just so that looks like just little hints of red here and there. Don't want to overdo it with the red. I just think I just need to darken one or two of these trees. Um, so I'm just going to take a bit of same ones that colours as I did before actually, a bit of brown, a bit of blue. I just stick another layer on the top of it just to darken the tone of them a bit so just so it contrasts better against the light in the distance. So I'm just mixing those two together and then just popping another layer on it just you can see how it's just darkened it a bit. Just bring that right down to the down to the bottom, just darken this one as well. One. I'll, I'll probably have to put these uh, the green back on again I think I've painted straight over the top of it Darken that one as well. I think that will do for the uh, for the darks. Squeeze a little bit more lemon yellow out, and then I'm going to give it a quick dry. Clean the brush, squeeze the water out, dry it on the tea towel, and then just redo some of those bits of do some of those leaves. I think I'm going to call that one finished. 
other than the little bird flying through the woods. Let's just pop him in quite low down today, somewhere about there. And all that remains now is back to the rigger, number three rigger. And I'm just going to stick my name. I'm trying to find somewhere where it's dry. I'm going to stick it down there, I think. And, right, let's stick a mount on it, see what it looks like. So here's the uh, finished part in the mount. So if we go and have a closer look, you can just about see those first trees I put in with the little with the number three rigger brush when the paper was at its wettest. So they faded, just softened right off, just to create that sort of distant look. And then as the paper dries and use broader and broader strokes, the trees sort of appear stronger and stronger as they come into the foreground until eventually you've got these great big monsters with the darkest tone sort of framing the scene through the centre. Some of these twigs and branches deliberately push right into the central lit area. Might have looked better if it was a little bit darker. Couldn't resist scraping a few rocks here by the water's edge. Although I should have done I should have done all that. I put the I put these foreground trees in too quickly. I should have obviously done all that first because once they're in it restricts what you what you can do. Just use some lemon yellow in a dry brush to brush in a few a few leaves and things up these big trunks. And also added a little bit in the foreground, a bit more of it on this other side by these foreground reeds, and a little bit of red here and there again, just try and keep it interesting. A few more rock scrapes in there, and then finally our little bird swimming through, swimming, flying through the this little creek in the woods. So that's it for this. I hope you enjoy that. I hope it was painted along with me. Um, Thanks as always for your support and best wishes. Um, keep practicing. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And I'll see you again soon.